Hi, it's Chrissy. So I'm doing an update today on the clinical trial I'm in for my cancer treatment. And there's a couple things I wanna accomplish in this video. First, I wanna tell you about my infusion I had yesterday. I'm no longer having to do the hospital inpatient. So I was able to go to Fred Hush Cancer Center and do everything outpatient yesterday. And it was a 12 hour day. Uh, so yeah. The second thing I wanna do is a commenter on my last video wanted to know more about clinical trial so I'll just tell you a little bit more about the clinical trial process but the third thing I want to do is update you on my test results which I'll be getting this afternoon so I'm on my way to Fred Hutch right now let me roll this window up because I'm waiting in line for my food um, I'm on my way to Fred Hutch Cancer Center now to get blood work done which is something I have to do every day the day after I get an infusion I have to get updated blood work to see where my numbers are make sure everything's okay so yeah, so that's what I'm gonna cover in this video. And I know I usually do a cancer vlog on the day of infusion, but yesterday was just so long and I was just like, mm, I didn't, I just, I just wanted to get through the day. But yeah, so yesterday I went in for my infusion and once a month I meet with my specialist, my multiple myeloma specialist, and he goes over things with me and updates me. And if you watched my last video, you know that there was this snafu with the clinical trial and me getting a miss, um, me getting an incorrect dosage of the clinical trial drug for the first treatment, for the first infusion. So my specialist was very apologetic about it, even though it was not his fault. It was actually most likely the sponsor's fault. Um, you know, at me as being his patient, of course, he didn't feel good about it. And he was very, very nice. I have a wonderful specialist. I love my specialist. Um, but he went over a little bit more detail about what happened. And basically, the sponsor pharmacy sent a filter with the drug. And I guess the way the filter functions, it did not filter the dosage right. So he believes I got 60% of what I was supposed to get. And in the last video, remember I said they were saying I wasn't going to be able to increase the dosage at, at any future point. But the medical director approved me getting the regular dosage I should have get so I should have gotten first or I should have gotten the beginning so that was really good news a really great development I was not expecting that at all and I thank my oncologist my specialist for advocating for that for me now the crazy thing that I also found out about this clinical trial well I'll get into the crazy in a second a commenter on my last video wanted to know more about clinical trials or how it all works and basically a clinical trial is something that you do voluntarily where a sponsor or a drug sponsor is working to get a drug FDA approved and they want to explore it in a specific disease or condition so in my case this clinical trial I'm on is a phase one clinical trial and there's not many um, you know it's a phase one trial so it's not been tested for multiple myeloma this is the first time but it has been tested in lymphoma and in uh, and an autoimmune condition so the sponsor that does this clinical trial from what I did what I found out in my research is they usually this type of drug which is called a bispecific antibody which is really an immunotherapy they have tested it in autoimmune conditions. And as I mentioned, they've tested it in lymphoma. But this is the first time they're testing it in multiple myeloma. So there were supposed to be 100 participants, but what I found out yesterday was, apparently, uh, there's some type of, uh, they've, they've got to um, redirect their focus um, because they, they, I guess they got some type of financial something going on and now they're no longer going to be doing any more testing in hematology cases or blood cancers. So they're going to redirect their attention and focus to uh, autoimmune conditions again. So this specific drug that I'm on, they're now going to test it in autoimmune conditions and they're going to no longer take any more cancer patients now I'm not impacted because I've already started it so they said that I will be able to continue thankfully um, but yeah there won't be any more um, cancer patients 
able to enroll in this clinical trial. So I have no idea how many other people are on this clinical trial with me. Um, I have not met anybody yet. I'm in a couple of different cancer groups and I did post that I was on this specific trial and nobody has said that they're also on it. And I know that initially they were only gonna take 100 participants anyway, so I have no idea how many people are on this clinical trial with me. Um, I'm thankful that I can continue, but what's kind of weird to me now that I'm thinking about is, if you're not taking any more patients, you're not exploring it in, a, in, in oncology, but what if the medication is successful? So that's a whole nother, probably just a whole nother video. Um, but yeah, I was very surprised to find that out yesterday from my doctor. Um, and I mean, I've not been, I've been in a clinical trial before, but it was not to test out a medication. It was actually to test, um, to, it was, it was called high throughput uh, testing. And basically they took my bone marrow and they tested it against like 160, 170 different chemos to see which chemo was most effective for fighting the myeloma that I have. <clears throat> so I'm very happy I participated in this clinical trial, but this is the first clinical trial that I've been in where I'm, where I'm testing out a medication. So all these little like snafus and stuff, I didn't see any of this coming. And my doctor was also surprised as well. He said he didn't see things like this with clinical trials. So I don't want to scare people away from doing a cl clinical trial because um, I guess this is a rare incident. Um, but the one thing that people don't know about clinical trials is um, you don't have to participate in clinical trials as a last ditch effort. You can participate in clinical trials at any point during your treatment process in the beginning, the middle, the end. Um, you don't have to wait till you've exhausted all FDA approved treatments. I haven't exhausted all FDA approved treatments, but I wanted to do this clinical trial because I, when I researched it, I really liked the mechanism of action. So I just kind of wanted to tell you a little bit more about that because the commenter was asking more about, you know, what clinical trials were all about. And, um, and basically, yes, yeah, for research to see how these drugs work against different diseases so they can get FDA approved. So, um, so the other thing I wanted to do in this video um, is mention now my, when I met with my specialist, he said yesterday, um, now there is certain blood work that I get that tells me what my cancer numbers are. Um, so I'll be getting those results. It takes 24 hours. So I'll be getting those results this afternoon and I will do a video reaction of me getting the results after I get my blood work sometime this afternoon. It should be in this afternoon. Um, but my doctor mentioned yesterday, there was a number that they look at that could possibly indicate um, how things are going. Now, based on that, he said he felt optimistic that I am responding to this treatment. So I am anxious and excited to see what it says. So I'll update you on that. As soon as I'm done my blood work, I'll be back to, re to react to these results. Well, okay, so I just got the email notification that my test results are in. So I'm gonna check my laptop with you and see what they have to say. Hopefully it's good news. So I'm just gonna log into my patient portal. Don't mind my stack of papers in the back. Don't mind them. So these are not the results that I thought were coming. Um, these are pathologist review and my free light chain. So I'm still waiting on the monoclonal protein, which is the test that I'm really looking for. But I'll go ahead and check what this is. So it says pathologist review, see comment. So this is just an update from the bone marrow biopsy I had earlier this month, just saying that they found abnormal um, plasma cytoid cells. So I already knew that. So that's not what I was looking for. But let me check the free light chains because that is an indicator. But I'm waiting on that M protein. So I may have to check back in. Okay, so I don't see any change with the lambda free light chains. 
the last time it was checked was um november 8th and it was 1.83 and it's gone up since that time to 3.7 so it's definitely not going down it's still in the normal range um so it's not high but um but it hasn't gone down so um i'm not sure what the m protein is going to say at this point but the free light chains hasn't come down any so um so i will update you when i get the second set of numbers to see what they say okay so i just got the m protein results in so let's check them together um it's gonna be a little tricky i think because i get them monthly but i did not get them at the beginning of the month the last time i got these results was november the 8th so i should have got them december the 8th but that's when i started treatment so i didn't get an updated number so it could have been high it most likely was higher than the last recorded number so based on how i was tracking it was going up by about 0.4 every month so the last time i had it checked it was 1.1 so by that estimation, I think if I would have had it checked in December the 8th, it would have been 1.5. So to me, I consider this a win if it is 1.5 or lower. So let's see what it says. Very nervous. Okay. So it's saying 1.3. So I think that that would indicate to me that even though it's slightly higher than my last number, I think if it was recorded like it was on a monthly basis, it would have been higher, like 1.5 or so. So I think that this means that it this is a positive result that things are going in the right direction. Even still, it's... At the very least, it's slowing it down. It's slowing down the progression because it'll be almost two months since I had this test result if I had it next week. So it has, even if we went off of the numbers, it has slowed the progression considerably because two months it should have gone up by 0.8, not 0.2. So the fact that it's at 1.3, I think is a good indicator that things are going in the right direction because I believe it was higher than that if they had checked it when they normally would have checked it. So I think things are going in the right direction. Fingers and toes crossed, but I think this is a good indicator that things are going in the right direction. So I feel good about this number. It's not as low as I wanted. Of course, you ideally want it at zero, but I actually feel good about this number. So those are my results um of course when i get my next results i'll update you i do have a bone marrow biopsy another one that i have to get done in january the 16th and i just had one in the beginning of december um and that will give me an um, even more bigger picture of how much involvement i have um at the last bone marrow I had 70% involvement. So if it's lower than that, of course, it's another good indicator that things are going in the right direction. So I'll update you then. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. I also did a community post today about what you want to see in my next few videos. I had some other ideas about some content for this channel. So be sure to check that out as well. Again, thank you so much for watching and coming along on this journey with me. I know it's been a roller coaster, but I appreciate you all. All right. See ya.